Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for getting up so early. Uh, I'd like to tell you something about uh, the latest results uh, of the LHC. Of course, you all know why LHC has been built. There are lots of uh, very important open questions in physics today. Uh, one of them, of course, is the question of the origin of the electroweak symmetry breaking. Uh, in other words, is the Higgs mechanism the one to explain it? And uh, you have already heard something about the Higgs uh, searches on, on Monday, I think. Uh, we also know that the standard model is really an almost perfect model, but it cannot accommodate everything. It must be extended uh, for theoretical reasons. And uh, there are lots of extensions on the market. Certainly, you know about supersymmetry, and uh, you will also know about grand unified theories and so on. Grand unified theories, well, uh, the question arises also, can we actually unify all forces? Uh, do all forces have the st uh, same strength uh, at high energies? And uh, gravity has really eluded us so far, really, because uh, gravity looks quite different from the other interactions, from the strong, weak, uh, uh, and weak interactions. So uh, even Einstein wanted to include gravity uh, in an over-encompassing uh, theory. Another question related also to the question of gravity uh, is the question, are there extra dimensions? Uh, this is extra spatial dimensions. Uh, and then always, uh, well, particles have up to now really always have been discovered to have some kind of substructure, so I think it is not uh, totally uh, excluded that our well-known quarks and leptons are not really fundamental, fundamental particles. Also, the question, why do we see three generations, or are there maybe more generations, is important. And uh, in astrophysics, uh, the question arises also about uh, dark matter, and very recently, in the, at the end of the 1990s, it was established that there is also some kind of anti-gravitational force uh, called dark energy. But we do not really know what, what this is. Uh, also, neutrinos have shown uh, to have many secrets in the past. They have been discovered to have uh, mass. Uh, to have mass. And uh, uh, actually, well, about, uh, I already said about dark energy and about neutrinos, maybe LHC is, is less uh, good to give us answers on these questions, but on, on most of the other questions, uh, LHC is really uh, the only machine actually uh, that is uh, left now to, to undertake uh, specific searches I will, I will describe later. And uh, also, you know, the LHC runs also not only with protons, but also with uh, heavy ions, and uh, uh, the goal is to understand dense and hot uh, matter much better, to understand, uh, in other words, the quark uh, gluon plasma. Now, I will give you quickly uh, the outline of my talk. I will start with proton physics and uh, end with uh, a short section on heavy ion physics. Uh, proton physics uh, has uh, started uh, with uh, the uh, investigation of, uh, of quite up to now well-known standard model physics. I will discuss very briefly uh, uh, aspects of soft physics and uh, also the discovery or rediscovery of resonances, including uh, quarkonia, heavy resonances of heavier quarks. Uh, I will talk a little bit about particle correlations. And I will mention uh, the physics of the W and Z, electroweak physics uh, and QCD, and uh, especially top physics. Now, the main reason why LHC was built is, of course, uh, to look uh, beyond the standard model. And I, will, uh, I have chosen a few subjects which are, in, in my opinion, very interesting. Uh, that's the question about uh, a possible fourth generation of quarks. I will talk about leptoquarks and uh, compositeness scenarios. And of course, I have to talk about supersymmetry. And you will see that there are many interesting new signatures coming up uh, within this framework, namely in the frame of long-lived particles. And I will talk about extra dimensions and heavy resonance states uh, as well. Now, uh, you have heard about the Higgs searches, so I, I will not uh, re-mention them again. And uh, the talks here, I will pre the, the, sorry, the, the slides I present today uh, contain mostly results from ATLAS and uh, CMS, and you can find uh, actually public analysis uh, at uh, these two uh, web uh, URLs. 
Now you know uh, there are big, uh, there are four big experiments at the LHC Atlas uh, CMS. These are the multi-purpose experiments looking for any kind of new physics, and uh, more dedicated experiments like Alice, which is doing mainly heavy ion physics, and uh, LHCb, which is uh, specializing in uh, beauty physics, looking into the question of matter, antimatter, asymmetry, and so on. And there are smaller experiments. Uh, one is TOTEM. This is uh, measuring uh, cross sections. And the other one is LHCF. This is actually an experiment looking, uh, in investigating the physics of uh, a cosmic rays. So you see there is a r quite a vast uh, range of subjects covered uh, by the LHC. Now, the machine has performed remarkably well alone in the, in the first uh, uh, period of physics data taking going up to 2010. Uh, 50 inverse uh, picobarn were delivered uh, to the experiments, uh, uh, except uh, Alice. They, they have to be careful about pile up in their time projection chamber, so, so they have less. Uh, the Alice curve is the, is the, is the, red, uh, the red line in the plot, which shows uh, the de delivered integrated luminosity as a function of, of, the, of the time uh, of the run. Now, uh, in 2011, more than five inverse femtobarn have been delivered to uh, the big experiments. And uh, for 2012, which is the, actually the last year of LHC running before the next uh, big technical stop when the, the magnet interconnections will be reinforced in order to be able to go to higher energies. So we expect, I just say, the order of 10 uh, inverse femtobarn, but it could be even, uh, if we are lucky, up to 20. Now, uh, uh, the energy might go up to 8 uh, TeV. This is actually the most likely option. It seems it is technically possible. But the final decisions are being taken this week uh, at the Chamonix uh, LHC workshop. Now, the, uh, you know, the design luminosity of the LHC is 10 to the 34, and the peak luminosity uh, last year has been uh, 3.6 times 10 to the 33. So we're about a factor 3 of the design luminosity. Uh, this corresponds to about 4 times uh, 10 to the 14 uh, uh, collisions uh, achieved uh, with a number of bunches, which was uh, uh, 1,380 per beam, uh, where 2,880 is the nominal value. And there were several bunch spacing options in place, and uh, now it is being discussed uh, to use either 15 nanoseconds bunch spacing or 25 nanoseconds. Of course, uh, this has implications for the experiments, which have to deal with uh, a lot of challenges, uh, one of the challenges is the so-called in-time pileup. By this we mean uh, that several uh, particle interactions are actually overlaid, and you get uh, multiple vertices uh, to which many tracks are associated. And uh, we expect for the highest luminosity in 2012 that the mean number of overlaid interactions will be actually uh, 33. Uh, in this picture you just see uh, an event with uh, 20 vertices, and uh, in the right plot, uh, you see two lines uh, showing you the number of uh, vertices on the x-axis. And uh, the red curve is the one after the technical stop uh, in August, and the, the black one is the one before. So you, you see quite a dramatic rise in the number of vertices. Of course, this has implications for uh, computing and also, also for triggering. Now, I, I don't show you the details of the Atlas, of the various experiments. I mean, the Atlas, I think some of you will have a chance to see it in, in real life uh, today, I was told. Uh, it has a toroidal magnet structure uh, with a smaller solenoid magnet in the center. And uh, uh, on the outside, you see uh, the muon systems. And uh, in the inside, you have inner tracking and uh, uh, calorimetry for, for uh, electromagnetic particles and hadronic particles, as usual. So this is just a very nice photo that shows you also the size. Uh, CMS, uh, uh, CMS is, is centered around a high magnetic uh, field uh, solenoid. It does not have toroids at all. Uh, and uh, in, inside this solenoid magnet, we, we have an inner tracking system made of silicon uh, plus a crystal electromagnetic calorimeter a brass scintillator hydrogen calorimeter, and on, on the outside you have a, a, a quite complicated system of, of uh, muon chambers. Also a nice uh, picture of uh, CMS. So you see the gentleman at the bottom. <laughs> but actually CMS is smaller than, than Atlas physically. 
but due to the magnetic field and the iron, it, it, it can actually be smaller. So now let me come to the, to the physics. Uh, of course, uh, what you see in the beginning is not really a Higgs particle, for example, but you see a lot of uh, uh, soft uh, events. And uh, you have to study this very carefully in order to understand then the high PT physics. So one, one example of very careful studies that has been made uh, is an analysis by Atlas who looked at uh, charged particle distributions, uh, etc. And also the so-called underlying event characteristics, uh, that is the soft part uh, of a collision. And uh, by studying, for example, the scalar PT density, uh, on the left side, you see uh, the comparison of the ATLAS data uh, as a function of rapidity uh, uh, with several uh, uh, widely used uh, uh, models like PCR, Herwig, Foget, and so on. Uh, and on the right, you see a plot uh, showing the charged particle uh, density as a function of the, of the leading uh, PT particle. And uh, you see uh, in, in the so-called away region, uh, th that is the, the region that uh, uh, is opposite to the leading track, uh, you see quite some, some difference, uh, quite some difference in the comparison Monte Carlo to data, which you can see at the bottom. So you can imagine that uh, a lot of tuning has to be made in order to reproduce the data uh, uh, correctly by Monte Carlo models, which we, of course, need to do uh, background studies, for example. Now, uh, I already said, well, the standard model has sort of been uh, rediscovered at LHC in its uh, very early phases. Uh, on the top, you see uh, a plot showing uh, the dye muon mass uh, recorded by the CMS experiment. And you, you see all, all the famous uh, well-known particle resonances, uh, J psi, for example, epsilon, uh, up to the Z. And uh, at the bottom, you see two plots of uh, atlas showing uh, showing results uh, for the lambda particle on the left and for the K short particle decaying to two pions on the right. The, These this bottom two plots were really taken with uh, very few data, so it was nice to see immediately these, uh, for example, these old particles with a very nice uh, mass resolution in addition. And uh, Atlas was happy to announce a sort of uh, discovery of a new particle, uh, the so-called chi B. Uh, it, it is a 3P uh, state, and uh, it, this is a, a bound state of, of a bottom and an anti-bottom particle. It's a sort of QCD analog of the hydrogen atom. And uh, we can observe transitions uh, through uh, radiative uh, emission of a photon. So this new particle, uh, or new particle resonant state, uh, would decay into an epsilon, either in the 1s or 2s state, uh, plus a photon, uh, and the epsilon uh, decays, or is, is uh, seen by the decay, uh, into a dimion pair. Uh, Atlas has studied data with uh, so-called unconverted photons and uh, converted photons. These are the two plots uh, shown here. Uh, un uh, converted uh, photos, photons are measured in the calorimeter, whereas converted photons, they, they, they are, this is a photon going to an E plus, uh, E minus pair, of course, uh, the, these ones you see uh, in the Atlas tracker. And uh, you see uh, the three uh, resonances, 1P, 2P, and for the first time on the right side of the plot, you see the uh, 3P resonance with a mass uh, slightly larger than predicted. Uh, about 10.54 uh, GeV with actually very small statistical and systematic errors, as you can see. Uh, the predicted value was uh, 10.52. Uh, and uh, uh, what else should I say? Yeah, I think uh, if, if you look, for example, uh, on the right side, you see uh, the, the chi B going to the epsilon 2s plus gamma. This is the, the purple curve at the bottom. And uh, here, uh, this only the, the chi B 3 p peak appears uh, because it is the only chi B state uh, which has enough energy to be detected in this uh, study. And uh, also another surprise uh, de uh, detected by the CMS experiment were the so-called near-side long-range correlations. Uh, th these are uh, correlations between uh, two particles for high multiplicity events 
of, uh, you see n, the number of tracks greater than 110, uh, in a PT range between 1 GeV and 3 GeV, and you can see a very pronounced uh, structure where the, the, the ridge in the center is, is, is not a surprise, but uh, uh, the surprise comes in the region uh, between, uh, 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 with, a, with a rapidity difference between the two particles, between uh, 2 and uh, 4.8, and very small uh, azimuth azimuthal difference. So you see the, the, the ridge indicated by these errors. This has been a surprise. Uh, something similar has been, has been seen in, in ion collisions, but nobody knows if, it, if uh, these two effects really have the same origin or not. So this is something that remains to be studied. Now, of course, uh, you know, QCD is, is, is one of the things that always happens at LHC, so we have to have a good knowledge about it. And uh, this we can get, for example, by measuring uh, jet cross-sections by, or by studying uh, ratios of three, po three jets to two jets, for example. Uh, in this plot, uh, you see on the, on the left side, uh, you see the inclusive uh, jet double differential cross-section in different regions of rapidity. Uh, the, the curves, the, uh, these uh, curves on top of each other. Should I get another pointer? I, I think I, I, I don't know where to press. Let me just try. Yeah. No, you just have to press this, uh, this green button. I think. Ah, the green button. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I managed before, but I forgot. Yeah. So th these curves are, are multiplied by different multiplication factors, just in order uh, that you can see, see see the differences. Now, what is important? Uh, th this spectrum really goes now beyond uh, the one TV range uh, in PT. And uh, the main systematic error is uh, the jet uh, scale uncertainty, but you see uh, that uh, uh, these spectra really agree very well with uh, next to leading order uh, perturbative QCD uh, cross-section predictions uh, with some non-perturbative corrections uh, included. And uh, on the right side, you see the three jet to two jet uh, ratio R32, uh, is a function of the so-called HT. This is the total transverse energy in an event where you sum up the energies uh, of uh, the jets. Now, now this, this ratio uh, rises with increasing uh, HT up to a plateau value of about uh, 0.8. Uh, now, the rise is due to the opening of the, of the, space, of the phase space for the third jet. Uh, and actually, the, the MAT graph, uh, Monte Carlo, uh, here with a special PCR tune called uh, D6T, reproduces actually the data uh, very well uh, in all, uh, in all uh, ranges of HT. And uh, this is quite a spectacular event recorded in the Atlas detector where you have two jets of 1.8 uh, TeV uh, with, a, with an invariant mass of uh, 4 TV. Remember, the center of mass energy at the Tevatron was 1.96 uh, TV, so this is uh, really much, much bigger here. So we are entering a new uh, domain. Uh, we have also, uh, for example, to study direct photon production. That, that is the, pr the production of prompt uh, isolated photons. I'm not talking about uh, photons... Uh, that arise in jets, uh, which mostly come from pion and uh, uh, eta decays. Now, to study this production, it's important to perform precision tests for perturbative QCD. Uh, uh, we can also constrain the uh, PDF functions in the proton. Uh, we can calibrate uh, the jet energy scale, and of course, uh, uh, these, these photons are, are important backgrounds in the searches for the Higgs in the two-photon channel, but also in the search uh, for uh, gravitons or, for example, uh, excited leptons, which decay to uh, a normal lepton plus a photon. Uh, on the left, you, you see the uh, differential uh, photon cross-section. Again, uh, the agreement with NLO expectations is quite well. And on the right side, uh, you, you see uh, results, actually, that were done 
for some uh, exotic analysis looking for uh, extra dimensions, but this is not really important here. I just show you uh, this plot, uh, which shows as a function of uh, the number of events as a function uh, of, uh, of, of the PT uh, of photons. And you can see here the different uh, background contributions are listed in, in different colors. Uh, for example, uh, the, the Z gamma background, uh, or also in red, for example, uh, the missing uh, the, the, the misidentified uh, photons coming from uh, QCD, uh, and you see even a contribution from beam, beam halo in, in blue. Now, also one of the first things that was studied at LHC uh, was electroweak physics. Uh, namely, uh, we looked for W and uh, C and Z. Uh, initial studies were made with electrons uh, and uh, muons because this is relatively easy. And uh, now we are also uh, analyzing uh, uh, de decays into tau particles where the taus can be detected uh, either leptonically or hadronically. Well, you know, uh, the hadronic decay of a tau would be uh, as a th one prong or three prong decays where you have a, a pi zero plus uh, uh, one or, or three uh, pions. And uh, you see uh, on the right a plot that was actually made for, uh, for a Higgs. Uh, analysis uh, of Higgs going to tau tau, but you see very, very nicely the uh, Z peak uh, here around uh, 90 GeV. And uh, you see the, the, the uh, in yellow, you see the contribution Z going to, to uh, taus uh, in all, all channels, leptonic, uh, hadronic decay channels. And you see also backgrounds from TT bar, electroweak and uh, QCD. And you see uh, also <laughs> at the bottom a very nice a uh, Higgs signal of 120 GeV, but this doesn't really show up in this uh, log scale here. <laughs> now, this is just some, some picture uh, in, the, in, the C in CMS uh, of, of a hadronic uh, uh, tau decay with uh, a muon. And uh, W and Z cross sections have been measured uh, very early. You can see an analysis. Uh, uh, you can see the, the paper here where also comparisons with older measurements, even from UA1 and UA2 at CERN, at the CERN SPS, and of course uh, with CDF and G0s uh, are plotted. Uh, so uh, you, you see the very small errors already with uh, the very first data uh, with uh, like, you know, 0.3 inverse picobarn, for, ex for, for example, uh, for, for the ATLAS experiment here, but still uh, with relatively small errors already. And now we have gone on also to measure W gamma cross section, Z gamma, and uh, very importantly for the Higgs search background, uh, the di boson uh, cross sections, uh, W, W, Z, and, and uh, Z, Z. Uh, this, uh, this, is, uh, th th this channel here is w with uh, the entire uh, data, data sample. Whereas here, I already said, uh, this was the 2010 data, the 36 inverse pico bar. We can also study several things. Uh, for example, charge symmetry of Ws, uh, because you would expect, uh, since, we have a prot uh, since we have two protons colliding, that there are, uh, and there are two U quarks, two U valence quarks in the proton and just one uh, D valence quark, you would expect that there are more W pluses than W minuses, and this is what you actually see uh, in the plot here, uh, on the top, you, you, you see uh, the, the missing ET uh, spe spectrum uh, for uh, events uh, with the W decaying into an E plus and a neutrino, and on the right, you see uh, the W minus decaying into an E minus and a neutrino. So you see the difference here, and this is all, this you can also see here in this uh, plot of the lepton charge asymmetry as a function of the lepton pseudo rapidity eta. And uh, you see also comparisons with uh, uh, theoretical uh, predictions. Uh, in blue, are the electron in, in, uh, in, in magenta are the muon channels. And uh, what one can see here is uh, that uh, the, the data suggests a somewhat flatter eta dependence than the model studied. And uh, by the way, the, here you see the uh, eta, uh, eta ranges uh, for the electrons and, and for the muons uh, in Atlas. For example, the muons, uh, they go, go up to about, uh, sorry, th th this is CMS, this plot here. Uh, muons, for example, have a coverage up to 2.1 and electrons are slightly more. 
Now, I will not talk much about uh, uh, B physics, but one interesting result that has already been obtained by CMS and also in combination with the LHCB experiment, uh, that is a result on, on the uh, rare decay uh, BS, that, that is a particle containing a, a B uh, quark uh, plus an S quark, uh, decaying in, into two muons. Now, this decay can only, in the standard model, uh, this is a flavor-changing neutral current, which, which is heavily suppressed by, by the gene mechanism. Uh, it, 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 it can be enhanced, for example, in models like uh, the uh, MSSM, where you have, a, for example, a Higgs particle exchange here, uh, which gives you an, an enhanced uh, mu plus mu, mu minus cross-section. And uh, in these plots, uh, you see uh, the observed uh, branching uh, ratio uh, done with the CLS analysis, and the green areas, uh, green areas contain the plus uh, minus uh, one sigma interval of possible results which are compatible with the expected uh, value uh, on the top when only uh, background uh, and at the bottom when the background plus the standard model uh, component is, are observed. Now, the, interestingly, uh, CDF and I think also D0, they have reported a relatively high value for this branching ratio, uh, namely 1.8 times 10 to the minus 8, whereas the standard model prediction would be uh, 3.2 times 10 to the minus 9. Uh, the upper limit at CDF was uh, 4.3 times 10 to the minus 8, whereas uh, the combined CMS and LHC analysis has given a value uh, less than uh, 1.08 times 10 to the minus 8 at 95% confidence level. So an enhancement of, of this branching ratio by more than 3.4 times the standard model prediction is actually excluded at 95% confidence level. But this does not mean that there is no room uh, for new physics, we just have to do, um, we have to analyze our data. Now I come uh, to the top. Top is actually uh, really one of the benchmark signals for LHC, and uh, Peter Yeni has said famously in 2009, when top is measured, the experiment is ready for the discovery phase. So I'm happy to say that uh, top has been measured <laughs> and has been very well measured, as you will see. Uh, TT bar production was, was the first thing that was studied. Now, TT bar production at the LHC uh, occurs uh, mainly through these uh, four processes here. Uh, the first three here show gluon fusion processes. Uh, these occur uh, in 87% uh, of the cases, whereas the remaining 13% uh, come from uh, quark, uh, anti quark annihilation. Now, the top is interesting in itself because uh, it, uh, uh, it's the only quark that decays uh, before it hadronizes. And uh, tops are also the decay products of, of uh, many, many new particles. For example, heavy partners of, of the B, heavy partners of, of the top, and so on. And uh, of course, these are a background to new particle searches. Now, the top events have a relatively complex uh, topology while well, top decays almost exclusively uh, into a W and a bottom quark. Uh, and in the final state, you have, for, for example, uh, the W going into, into one uh, B jet uh, and uh, into a, to a quark uh, and, and another, uh, and two, two, two other jets, uh, uh, two, two, no, sorry, the, the W goes, in, for example, here into two jets and, and uh, the B uh, emerges at the so-called B-jet in the experiment with the displaced vertex. That's a characteristic of a, of a uh, B-jet. So on the other side, you see the top going into a W plus and a B with uh, the W plus going into a lepton plus a neutrino and the, uh, and the bottom uh, again hadronizing as, as a B-jet. You can categorize your events uh, into several classes. You can uh, look for events where the W decays only hadronically, so these are called all hadronic channels. But uh, uh, more easy to treat are, of course, uh, channels with uh, leptons, and you can have either lepton plus jet channels or uh, dilepton channels, E plus, E minus, mu plus, mu minus, and also uh, E's and uh, mu's mixed. Now, the top cross-section was already very well measured. You see, for example, a summary by the CMS experiment. 
Uh, on the top, you see uh, the combination result uh, with up to data up to about uh, one quarter of the data that we're, we're taking so far, up to 1.1 inverse femtobarn. And you see uh, the value, one, 166 picobarn, with a very small statistical error of 2 and a systematic error of uh, 11, uh, plus uh, a part uh, that comes from the systematic error on the luminosity, which is about 6%. So, and of course, you can also re reconstruct uh, uh, the spectra where, where you can, for example, read off uh, uh, the mass. So, of course, this looks uh, very compatible with the prediction of, of M top around 172 GV. This, this is done by the uh, ATLAS experiment and that cho shows uh, uh, the all hadronic uh, channel uh, with uh, the three jet mass on the x axis. Now, one of the very interesting uh, things that were studied first uh, at the Tevaton in its final days, uh, the, this was the production of uh, single uh, tops, not TT bars, but, but single tops that can arise in three uh, different channels. One is the so called uh, T channel. Uh, you, you have these two uh, Feynman diagrams that contribute to this channel. And this is actually the channel that is dominant both at the Tevatron and uh, the LHC. And uh, for the first time, also the WT w channel, which has a much smaller cross-section at the Tevatron, has been studied. But actually, at the LHC, it is significant, so that first measurements uh, have been made. So you have an associated production of a W and a T. Uh, and the last channel, uh, where up to now only limits have been measured, this is the S channel, which is very small at the Tevatron, but is also small uh, at uh, the LHC. Now, you, you see the various single uh, top results uh, by ATLAS and CMS. For example, ATLAS measured uh, the T channel with a cross section of about 64, uh, sorry, with a cross section 90 plus 32 minus 22, so the error errors are, are relatively large still. But uh, the standard uh, model, the standard prediction is uh, about 65 uh, picobarn. And you see, for example, results for. Uh, two jets uh, plus one uh, B tag, uh, and you see the different contributions from the three channels here in blue, three top single top channels in blue, and uh, the other backgrounds like uh, from top pairs or W plus uh, jets, uh, jet plus jets, uh, dibosons, and so on. The WT channel has a somewhat smaller cross section, about uh, measured to be about 22. Uh, plus 9 minus 7 picobar compared to a prediction of about 16 picobar. Uh, and for the S channel, uh, there is an upper limit. Uh, this cross section should be below 26.5 picobar, uh, where the prediction is around 5 picobar. So now we, we come to really interesting stuff, uh, things that have never been measured before, but of course uh, we look for them at LHC. And one of the f these examples uh, is the search for uh, fourth generation quarks. Uh, th this could be, you see, a, an extension uh, with a heavier uh, bottom quark called B prime and a heavier top quark called uh, T prime. Now, uh, these particles are supposed to decay uh, both into a top uh, and a W. Now, for the B prime, you can use uh, tri-leptons or same sign dileptons uh, plus at least one B jet as a signature, whereas for uh, T primes, you will look for opposite uh, sign uh, dileptons. And uh, you can see uh, spectra, for example, here it's plotted the number of uh, uh, jets uh, with uh, uh, background uh, contributions. You see the black points are the data here. Uh, the signal region uh, is. Uh, is to the right of this uh, blue dotted line with uh, n jets greater than uh, 4. And uh, again, for, uh, you see the various backgrounds. For example, the TT bar background uh, is in red uh, here. And you see the contributions from single top. This is uh, this one here, uh, Z, to, uh, Z to, to gamma gamma in blue. And uh, you see that this here uh, is a signal for, for a B prime uh, of a mass of 400 uh, GeV. So uh, similarly, uh, for example, here we plot uh, the minimum value of four possible uh, 
mass combinations between lepton and uh, the, the B, B jet. And uh, you see again uh, data points, and here a, a, a T prime signal of uh, 450 uh, GeV given here by the blue curve. Uh, unfortunately, we don't really see a signal. So what we can do is we can uh, derive some limits, and these are uh, shown uh, here. So you see uh, a T prime uh, with uh, masses below 552 are excluded at 95% uh, conf confidence level. And for the B prime, it's similar. It's, uh, the mass limit is, uh, is about also about 500 uh, GeV. Now, another interesting set of particles are leptoquarks. Now, these are color triplet bosons which have fractional charge, and uh, these particles arise, for example, in grand unified theories. Now, if we assume that uh, leptoquarks couple only to quarks and leptons of the same uh, generation, uh, an analysis was performed uh, by Atlas looking for the first uh, generation uh, lepto, lepto quarks. You, you see here uh, the Feynman diagram. Uh, you have the gluon uh, fusion, and, and, and in the final state, you have a lepto quark and an anti lepto quark decaying either uh, uh, in, into electron plus uh, a U quark in both cases, or uh, decaying on one hand into one lepto quark into an electron and the U quark and the other one into a, a, a down quark and a, and a, uh, and a, a neutrino, electron uh, neutrino. Uh, beta, the, this is the uh, branching ratio. So in this case, uh, into, into the branching ratio into electron plus quark. So in this case, beta is one. And uh, you would look uh, in your events, you would look for a signal of two electron, signature of two electrons plus two jets. Uh, in, this, in the second case, uh, where beta is, is one half, you would look for one electron, two jets uh, plus uh, missing energy. Now, the ATLAS result uh, for the first generation is given here, and it shows uh, uh, that leptoquarks for the branching ratio one case are excluded uh, below 660 GeV, and for the uh, 0 0.5 case, they are excluded below 607 GeV. Just for comparison, this is uh, uh, with more than five inverse femtobarn, uh, uh, the, the, more, the limit by D0 calculated with more than uh, 5.4 inverse femtobarn. So this, you have extended the range. Atlas have extended the range quite, quite substantially. And uh, CMS has also looked for a second and third generation uh, leptoquarks. Uh, this plot here uh, is valid for a leptoquark that goes to a B quark uh, plus a neutrino tau. And uh, again, uh, you, you see, you see the, uh, you can derive an exclusion limit for leptoquark mass is greater than uh, 300 GeV for a branching ratio in this channel uh, of one. Again, the D0 exclusion uh, zone is given here. Now we can, uh, of course, uh, also look for compositeness. For example, quarks might be composed uh, of uh, prions, but uh, also lepton might be uh, composed of, of prions, and uh, which would uh, give rise to, to a contact interaction where you have an, a, or a new interaction with a messenger particle that you don't, cannot detect uh, directly at the LHC. Uh, the Lagrangian would be modified uh, by an additional term, this LQQQQ, uh, uh, where you have the inverse uh, squared of the compositeness uh, scale going into it. And uh, actually, by studying, for example, the Dijet centrality ratio, you can uh, d derive uh, the compositeness uh, scale if, if, if there is a signal. Now, uh, this digit centrality ratio uh, is, is given by the ratio of the number of events in which the two highest PT jets uh, both fall into the central region uh, divided by the number of events in which the two highest PT jets both fall outside in the non-central region. And uh, actually, the RC plot uh, uh, on the left, it shows uh, uh, that the best fit is actually for a compositeness scale value of 2.9. But uh, unfortunately, it is not uh, statistically uh, significant. Uh, you just see uh, the, the, the dashed curve is for a compositeness scale of 2 TeV. Uh, 
and uh, again, uh, we can we can only derive uh, limits, namely the limit is 3 point uh, TeV for this analysis. And you can also look at uh, digit angular distributions uh, shown here, but again, we saw no signal for compositeness. Uh, excited leptons are another possibility. Uh, these are uh, leptons that uh, have a radiative decay into a normal lepton plus a photon. And uh, the production is via a four fermion contact interaction, which again can be described by an effective Lagrangian. Uh, you have again this compositeness scale, uh, the square in the uh, denominator, plus uh, a coupling constant uh, uh, and uh, the fermion current. And uh, what is nice is that there is a very clean final state, uh, namely uh, when an L star is produced uh, in association with, with a normal lepton, then in the final state, you will have two leptons plus uh, a photon. And uh, these are actually very well separated from each other, and in addition, they are isolated. So uh, you see Atlas, uh, uh, they have plotted uh, the mass of uh, two leptons, namely two muons in this case, uh, plus the photon. And you see a signal of, uh, of, a, of a mu, mu star of uh, 0.5 TV mass would manifest itself uh, as, as the red curve here. And uh, the data, well, they show nothing much interesting. Again, we can uh, de derive uh, several, uh, well, we can derive limits for, for both uh, uh, E star uh, given here on the top and, uh, and the mu star here uh, at the bottom. Now, we can also look for uh, resonances in digets, which may show signals for very exotic uh, uh, particles like uh, string resonances or, again, excited quarks, but also uh, more exotic things, for example, like so-called colorons. I will talk about them in the next slide. But also to more well-known particles like uh, W primes or Z prime, which also can arise, for example, in extensions of the standard model in E6 models and so on. And uh, it could also be a Randall syndrome graviton. I will also talk about this a little bit later. Uh, the highest jet jet mass uh, is, is 3.8 TV in this uh, CMS analysis. And uh, the actual, uh, the, the, you have to be careful about jet energy scale uncertainties here in, in the high end. You see it, it, this uncertainty really broadens up. And uh, uh, it's so you see the importance of understanding the jet uh, energy scale very well. But again, uh, we see no signals. You, you have uh, here. Uh, overlaid, uh, for example, a signal for string resonances of uh, 1.8 or 2.6 TV, so nothing shows up there. Uh, uh, and and, and, and other, other resonances. Uh, here you see uh, the, reson the uh, observed 95% confidence level upper limit of, of the cross section times the branching fraction times the acceptance as a function of uh, the resonance mass, and here, here you see the splitting. Uh, in the channels gluon gluon quark gluon and uh, quark quark here in blue, and uh, the string resonance limited that's the highest one. So string resonances are excluded below 4 TV, and uh, ex excited uh, quarks that's this, this uh, theoretical curve here, for example, are excluded below uh, about 2.5 TV. So now we can look uh, for new physics not only with two jets, but we can also look for new physics with uh, pairs of digets. Now this would, for example, arise in the production of so-called colorons. Now these are color octet scalars or uh, vectors, and you can see uh, their production diagrams uh, here, uh, shown here. And these uh, colorons would decay into a, a normal quark, uh, antiquark. Uh, pair each, so uh, when you have the two final states with the same mass, actually, uh, in the final states you expect uh, four uh, jets uh, in, in your experiment. Now you see here is plotted the paired digit average mass uh, together with uh, uh, simulated colorant signals here for 400 GV and here for 800 GV. Uh, the blue curve is a background fit and uh, uh, to the data, whereas the, the red uh, dashed curve, dashed dotted curve is the QCD simulation. Uh, again, the data are very nicely compatible uh, with, the, with this background, so we, have, we can only exclude 
pair production of these colorants for mass is between uh, 320 and uh, 580 GeV. Now, you uh, see here in this plot where, you, where we plot the, uh, the cross-section times branching ratio times acceptance uh, as a function of the resonance mass. And you can see actually uh, the largest fluctuation is at 625 GeV, but uh, the significance is only uh, 1.5 sigma if we include the so-called uh, look elsewhere effect. Now, I already mentioned uh, W primes. And uh, in, in the past, uh, usually uh, very simple models of W primes and C primes also have been studied. These were models uh, where the W prime really looks like a standard model W, which has the same couplings except uh, to, to, to the third generation, which becomes also relevant. Uh, and uh, so usually left-handed W primes with standard model couplings were studied. And now CM CMS has, for the first time, studied also right-handed uh, w uh, primes together with interference with the normal standard model uh, W, which can be either constructive or destructive. And uh, also a, a model with kaluza uh, klein states in a universal extra dimension framework has uh, been studied. Uh, you see here uh, the, the transverse uh, mass derived from the missing energy plus uh, a lepton, uh, for example, here in this case, it shows uh, the signal for a W uh, prime going to a muon into neutrino, and you see the, in blue the background for ordinary W to mu nu, 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 also from uh, tau. So I don't know if you can see that. Ah, yeah, it's here. Uh, from top, uh, Drelian production, and so on. And you see overlaid a signal uh, of a W prime of 2.3 TeV. So you see, you don't really see a resonance, you just see a, a broad. Uh, spectrum in MT. We do have some, some interesting events, but of course a uh, future will tell if, if this is anything. And uh, for the moment we can only uh, again uh, de derive uh, limits here. Uh, so you see uh, in red uh, uh, theoretical cross sections uh, for Kaluza Klein W primes uh, and uh, the observed uh, limit for electrons is, is, is plotted uh, in red. The observed limit for the muon uh, is plotted in blue, and you can uh, see, see where. And this is the the, the black curve is the combination, so you can derive uh, for, for the different models. Uh, you can derive limits between just under 1.5 T, uh, TeV and uh, up to something like uh, almost almost 3 TeV. So now, now I come to a very important extension of the standard model. This is supersymmetry. I think I, have to, don't, uh, I don't have to explain you the details. Now, supersymmetry is, is not one theory. It is actually a, a framework of, of uh, several models with, with a huge parameter space. Uh, the advantage of SUSY is that it gives uh, stability to the Higgs mass, so the radioactive corrections, they, they don't blow up. Uh, unification of forces is possible, and uh, what is very nice, SUSY has a candidate for... Uh, dark matter, but unfortunately we have not found any uh, bosonic SUSY partners to fermions and uh, fermionic partners to bosons uh, yet. So, well, I already said that SUSY is not so easy to explore because of the huge parameter space. For example, uh, the minimum supersymmetric standard model has 105 parameters. So people have uh, been looking for a simplified, for more simplified uh, benchmark models which have fewer parameters. But uh, uh, there are also other models like uh, the non-minimal supersymmetric standard models where you have more, uh, e e even more doublets or triplets or whatever of, of uh, in addition. And uh, actually in uh, R parity, that, that is a, a, a quantity that has been uh, postulated because uh, in order to, to guarantee the stability of the proton, uh, but there are also models vari violating this R parity, which is given by minus uh, 1 uh, to the power of 2s plus the lepton number plus uh, 3 times the baryon number. And uh, actually, I will show that this uh, can lead to some quite uh, unusual experimental signatures. Now, uh, well, you will see that uh, the, the constraint minimal uh, MSSM, the constraint MSSM, which has five parameters, 
Uh, this is already in somewhat in difficulty, so we have to, under to study really more uh, sophisticated model, for example, we can study non-universal Higgs mass models. These are models where the Higgs mass is not unified with this fermion mass, and uh, you have these kind of parameters. I don't have time to go into the details. Uh, there is also a, a minimal gauge-mediated SUSY breaking, uh, where lambda is, is one of the parameters that gives uh, the visible sector of, uh, of, of the SUSY, of the soft SUSY breaking scale. Uh, and uh, as usual, the tangent beta, this is the ratio of the vacuum uh, uh, expectation values of the two, uh, of the two Higgs doublets. So let me just go uh, to the SUSY searches. So initially, uh, sort of generic searches have been performed uh, with a number of inclusive final states, uh, states uh, containing, for example, B-jets, missing transverse energy, leptons of photons, uh, you can see some very complicated cascade decays uh, giving rise to, to not so difficult experimental signatures, for example, to multi-jets plus uh, missing ET here. And uh, we all now have to make uh, interpretations, and uh, these interpretations uh, can be made either through constrained uh, models, for example, minimal supergravity, uh, or the G-gauge-mediated uh, uh, SUSY breaking model, or now also widely used are so-called simplified models. These are phenomenological models which are defined by an effective uh, Lagrangian which describes uh, a small number, the interaction of a small number of new particles. Uh, and these simplified models assume a certain mass hierarchy and uh, decay, decay chain. And I will also show you that now new signatures have to be exploited uh, coming, for example, from long-lived particles, which can lead to displaced vertices uh, in, in a range uh, of about uh, 10 millimeters with a displacement of about 10 millimeters. But you can also have disappearing uh, tracks, which gives uh, rise to a kink. Uh, this is at the order of 100 millimeters. And you can even have a, a very large uh, geometrical ranges uh, Trans transversed, by, traversed by stable massive uh, particles which could just penetrate uh, your detector. So the order here, the geometrical order, is more than uh, a meter or so. Uh, I don't have time to go to this, and also maybe I skip this for time reasons. Now, I, I just want to show you a result for uh, limits derived uh, in the constraint uh, minimal supersymmetric model. Now, this is the kind of plot that really has given creeps to, to theorists and experimentalists alike, because as you can see, uh, if you look, for, for example, at this uh, blue curve here, you can see that, that all this uh, phase space here uh, is already excluded, but... Uh, now, this does not mean that Susie is dead, <laughs> which uh, has been stated, I think, maybe in the press. Uh, but this is, of course, not true. This is a very specific model with, with four parameters uh, relating the M0 mass to the M1 half mass here. And uh, actually, uh, I just want to mention, for example, the so-called razor analysis. This is a new analysis technique uh, which has given already very nice results here uh, in, in the range of M0 above 800 uh, GV. But th there is more to come, and uh, again, this is just a specific model. Now we have to uh, also study, begin to study direct SUSY signatures, namely, for example, the uh, production of, uh, of uh, spot on pairs. Now, uh, in the MSSM, the right-handed quarks, squarks uh, and left-handed squarks can mix. Uh, in order to form two mass eigenstates. And actually, this mixing is proportional to the mass of the corresponding uh, S, uh, standard model fermion partner. So therefore, it will be very important for the third uh, generation. So, so this large mixing can yield uh, spot and stop mass eigenstates that are much lighter than other squarks. So you, we have a real chance to discover these uh, particles uh, of the SUSY spectrum first. And uh, this shows an analysis by ATLAS, uh, which uses the exclusive decay mode of such a, uh, of, of, of the, the first partner, the B1 uh, of, of this bottom, uh, which decays uh, exclusively into a bottom quark plus uh, the lightest neutralino. And uh, the event selection would be, you look for large missing transverse energy uh, plus uh, B jets coming from the B1 uh, pair. And uh, assuming our pari parity conservation, ATLAS uh, has excluded spot on masses below 390 GeV, 
uh, for a neutralino mass is below uh, 60, 60 GeV here roughly. And here you see also CDF and uh, D0 exclusion ranges. Also, uh, heavy new top, uh, uh, oh, so, sorry, new top quarkness, uh, top quark partners could be uh, produced, listed, uh, named generically with a large uh, T, and this would decay into a normal top uh, plus uh, an A0, which is a stable weakly interacting particle, and uh, in an R parity conserving SUSY model, the T can be uh, identified as a stop, and the A0 can be identified either with a neutralino or a gravitino. And uh, the search is performed in events with tops plus missing energy using the single lepton channel plus four jets and also ET-MIS. Uh, you see the ET-MIS spectrum recorded here uh, by ATLAS. Uh, the backgrounds are in color. And uh, in white, you see uh, uh, this new top uh, particle with a mass of 360 GeV and an A0 mass of about 100 GeV given by the black curve and uh, uh, another one by, by the dashed curve. Again, uh, limits here uh, derived by ATLAS. So uh, masses, again, nothing found in the data, unfortunately. So masses of, of uh, Ts are excluded up to 420 GeVs and masses of, of this neutral particle uh, up to 140 GeV. Now, if you allow me five more minutes... <laughs> Uh, I will talk about also uh, some new uh, interesting signature. For example, one is the signature of long-lived uh, gluino-based R hadrons. So it, uh, now what are R hadrons? Uh, these are sort of balls of, for example, a gluino plus a gluon or a gluino uh, plus quark, anti-quark, or even a gluino plus uh, three quarks. Uh, and... Uh, how, how does one look for them? Now, this is quite interesting because you have to look for decays in time intervals where there are no P, collision, P, 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 P collisions because uh, uh, th these particles would leave a jet-like uh, energy deposit in the experiments, but it could even occur weeks later. <laughs> so, well, you have to adapt your trigger to look, uh, especially in intervals where there are no P, P, P collisions. And... Uh, uh, this, uh, now, this is a new analysis by ATLAS. The previous one has already been done by CMS. Uh, and uh, this analysis has excluded gluinos, these long-lived gluinos in the mass range between 200 and about 340 GeV. Uh, actually, for a, a large range of uh, possible lifetimes, namely between uh, 10 microseconds to uh, up to 1,000 uh, seconds. This is just a, a specific so-called generic matter inter interaction models, but, but of course there are other models available. Now, CMS has also looked for heavy, stable charged particles. For example, such a particle could be the, a long-lived uh, next to leading, uh, uh, n the lowest uh, mass uh, next to Lightest, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Next to lightest uh, supersymmetric particles, uh, particle which, would, which could arise, for example, in scenarios like split SUSY or gauge mediated SUSY breaking models. Now, if these particles have a mass greater than about 100 GeV, uh, you would expect uh, their velocity to be much less than the speed of light. Uh, v uh, over C should be below 0.9. And uh, the signature is very interesting. You have a high-momentum particle with uh, an anomalously large energy loss to EDX uh, by ionization, and you also have an enormously long time of flight up to uh, the muon system. Uh, these two cases are shown here uh, for the CMS experiment. Uh, so your HSCP particle uh, th that goes up to the muon system, uh, it would uh, lose... Uh, a lot of energy through the radiation in the, in the tracker part here, and uh, it would have an enormously long time of flight up to the muon system. Or the particle could become neutral by charge ex exchange, so of course you would not see it in the muon system, you would see it only here uh, in the tracker. And uh, CMS has already analyzed uh, the full data set, uh, but uh, data are still consistent with the background, which is incidentally estimated from data, and uh, for, for uh, several particles, uh, for example, 
uh, for gluinos or stops or staus, you can derive limits that range from about 1 TeV uh, down to the stau for about uh, 220 GeV or so. Now, uh, extra dimensions, you, uh, of course, this is a school uh, where extra dimensions are one of the topics, so I think I don't have to uh, mention all, all the details. Uh, anyway, you have uh, the three plus one dimensional brain plus uh, a higher dimensional space called the bulk, and uh, the, the models differ by uh, the assumption which particles can travel in the bulk, which can travel uh, in, in, in the normal uh, three plus one uh, brain. Anyway, for a, a typical model is the so-called ADD model, which uh, deals with large extra dimensions. Uh, and in, in this model, uh, the, uh, the Planck scale is not the relevant scale, but, but uh, the scale, the relevant scale is, is, is the quantum gravity scale of the higher dimensional uh, theory. So gravitation at this scale becomes the same as, as for gauge interactions. And uh, this fundamental scale, MD, should be of the order of uh, 1 TeV. Uh, and, uh, well, I already mentioned uh, Kaluza Klein particles, uh, which uh, arise when you have uh, the extra dimensions uh, rolled up, like was suggested by Oscar Klein in 1926. So uh, if particles move in this dimension, they must somehow come back to the starting point, and there you, you can have standing wave, waves which emerge, and these can uh, give rise to Kaluza Klein towers. Now, the ART model has flat extra dimension, whereas the Randall Sundrum model uh, uh, has warped extra dimensions. Uh, uh, there, there are also m m two types, at least, uh, but uh, uh, in general, this is a five dimensional model with a warped uh, metric. And uh, you would expect uh, several, uh, for example, uh, non equidistant Kaluza Klein towers, so graviton one, two, and so on, decaying uh, to two photons or two electrons or two muons. Uh, and a direct search uh, for such uh, particles would be through their decay into, uh, no, sorry, uh, would, would be uh, when, for example, a, a gluino is, is produced together with uh, such a Kaluza Klein uh, graviton, uh, which would manifest itself as missing energy in the experiment. And the gluon here would just be a, a single uh, jet. Now, CMS has performed uh, an analysis, again, uh, where the data are very much consistent uh, with uh, the background. Uh, the red curve uh, shows an ART model with an extra dimension of two. And uh, you, you, uh, he, here is another uh, exclusion plot with uh, four uh, extra dimensions. And you see that uh, the MD mass range uh, is excluded uh, somehow below uh, between two and three GeV. You can also look uh, for indirect signatures which would manifest themselves in an enhancement of the Drelian cross-section, uh, but you could also have a resonant uh, production shown here uh, by the red curve, for example, for a random Randall syndrome uh, particles, uh, whereas uh, here you see uh, the curve for, for the ATD model. Again, uh, no signal. Uh, and uh, you can also, of course, uh, produce uh, the famous black holes, which, which uh, should evaporate uh, through Hawking radiation. And uh, this is a very nice event uh, showing uh, a democratic and isotropic decay of, of a possible black hole, for example, here into 10 jets uh, with a total transverse energy of 1.1 uh, uh, TeV. So you look uh, for high multiplicities of jets, leptons, and photons. And uh, in the ART model, uh, we exclude uh, black holes between 4.5 and 5.1 TeV. I just uh, mention w one last thing uh, for heavy ions. Uh, th there, this is a very difficult topic to study, but uh, one of the first very nice results was an analysis by Atlas on the centrality dependent dijet asymmetry, where you uh, compare uh, lead iron collision with uh, uh, proton collisions, and, and you see. Uh, centrality, this is the total transverse energy deposited in the forward calorimeters. So, so uh, the histograms from the left to right go from peripheral to central collisions, and you really see a spectacular asymmetry here uh, in the region of centrality, 0 0.2 to 10 percent. And uh, you could look on the event displays, you could really see how one of the jets uh, uh, has uh, disappeared. So this was quite a spectacular result. Uh, 
We have also studied uh, uh, correlations in ion data, and uh, this ridge is most evident in the range between 2 and 6 uh, GV, but disappears uh, at high uh, PT, and you see here the comparison with uh, minimum, uh, minimum bias uh, events. Now I come to the conclusions. Now, uh, both the proton and the heavy ion runs of the LHC have been very successful, and uh, the physics of the last decade has essentially been redone. The experiments have now performed a large range of analyses. I have only mentioned a few, but there is a vast number. Uh, and uh, these analyses are also on subjects that, that were not even known uh, a decade ago. And, uh, well, there have been some sort of discoveries made, like for this uh, Chi B 3P particle, but real discoveries, they may be just around the corner, maybe in supersymmetry, and hopefully uh, very soon this year, the, the Higgs. So there is a lot to do for young, aspiring physicists. You will not run out of work. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah.